Welcome to World History Channel. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Elizabeth I was Queen of England and Ireland from 17th November 1558 until her death in 1603. Elizabeth was the last monarch of the House of Tudor and is sometimes referred to as the Virgin Queen. Elizabeth was the only surviving daughter of Henry VIII by Anne Boleyn, his second wife, who was executed when Elizabeth was two years old. Anne's marriage to Henry was annulled and Elizabeth declared illegitimate. Henry restored her to the line of succession when she was 10 by the Third Succession Act of 1543. After Henry's death in 1547, Elizabeth's younger half-brother Edward VI ruled until his own death in 1553, bequeathing the crown to a Protestant cousin, Lady Jane Grey, and ignoring the claims of his two half-sisters, the Catholic Mary and the younger Elizabeth. Edward's will was set aside within weeks of his death and Mary became queen, deposing and executing Jane. During Mary's reign, Elizabeth was imprisoned for nearly a year on suspicion of supporting Protestant rebels. Upon her half-sister's death in 1558, Elizabeth succeeded to the throne and set out to rule by good counsel. After the short, disastrous reigns of her siblings, her 44 years on the throne provided welcome stability for the kingdom and helped to forge a sense of national identity. It was expected that Elizabeth would marry and produce an heir. However, despite numerous courtships, she never did. She was eventually succeeded by her first cousin, twice removed, James VI of Scotland, the son of Mary, Queen of Scots. The Queen's health remained fair until the autumn of 1602, when a series of deaths among her friends plunged her into a severe depression. In February 1603, the death of Catherine Carey, Countess of Nottingham, the niece of her cousin and close friend, Lady Knowles, came as a particular blow. Her mental health struggles saw her retreat from public life and she was also battling painful physical ailments including rotting teeth that had led to abscesses in her mouth and pus-filled glands. The Queen suffered hair loss and refused to be attended to or bathed. It is said she resisted lying down out of fear she would never rise again, taking to standing in her bedchamber for 15 hours before collapsing on the floor. When Robert Cecil, her Lord Privy Seal, told her that she must go to bed, she snapped. Must is not a word to use to princes, little man. She lay speechless for four days before her servants finally managed to settle her into bed. She expressed regret about ordering the execution of her cousin, Mary, Queen of Scots, during her final days. Sir Robert Carey, her first cousin, recorded that the Queen shed many tears and sighs manifesting her innocence that she never gave consent to the death of that queen. The cause of Elizabeth's death remains a hotly contested subject. Before her death, Elizabeth refused permission for a post-mortem to be conducted, leaving the cause of her death forever shrouded in mystery. There are, however, a few theories. Some say that she may have died of blood poisoning, brought on by her use of a lead-based makeup known as Venetian Ceruse. This substance was classified as a poison 31 years after Elizabeth's death. Others proposed causes of death including pneumonia, tonsils or cancer. Close to the time of her death, Elizabeth's coronation ring had grown into her flesh. This was due to the fact that she had never had it removed during the 45 years of her reign. Her doctors insisted that the ring had to be removed and within a week, Elizabeth died. However, a modern-day autopsy carried out by the home office pathologist, Dr. Brett, had concluded it was pneumonia that ultimately took the Queen's life. A swelling to her left hand indicated her heart was not functioning properly, with the two experts also questioning whether sepsis had developed because of this. Elizabeth was thin and emaciated at the time of her death, and the recent autopsy based on the symptoms she was displaying showed the Queen had a fluid buildup in her lungs and her heart was not pumping effectively. Elizabeth Saddle, a lady-in-waiting, reported that the Queen was haunted by visions of her frail body and that a playing card with a nail through its head was found on the Queen's chair towards the end of her life. Elizabeth Saddle also reported that the Queen's corpse was so full of noxious vapours that it exploded in her lead coffin. Saddle proved to be an unreliable source 
after she con- converted to Catholicism following the Queen's death. Elizabeth's embalmed body was guarded in the Whitehall Palace for three weeks before being laid to rest in a lavish funeral ceremony on 28th April 1603. Thousands turned out to watch the funeral ceremony procession through London. Many elegies written at this time mention the names of those in the procession, which was said to even include the most lowly members of the royal household, including the maker of spice bags, wine porters, and scullery maids. At the funeral, an effigy of Elizabeth I was placed on top of a lead coffin. Dressed in royal robes, the effigy was so lifelike that it made the mourners gasp. Elizabeth I is buried in Westminster Abbey. Her body was first placed in a vault of her grandfather, King Henry VII. However, in 1606, Elizabeth's coffin was transferred to the Henry VII Chapel in Westminster Abbey and placed beneath a monument to her erected by King James I. A monument to Mary, Queen of Scots, stands close by. Elizabeth's coffin is in the same vault as her half-sister, Mary I. The Latin inscription at the base of the tomb reads, Partners in throne and grave, here we sleep, Elizabeth and Mary, sisters in hope of the resurrection.